Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. I'm Sarasota Tim, and you are watching a video that I do a couple of times a week. I try uh, sometimes once a week, and sometimes a week will go by for whatever reason I don't make this video, but it's called Crushing It for Christ. I am a Christian. Maybe you're a Christian or a believer in God of some kind, Catholic, Protestant, uh, Jewish, it doesn't really matter. You are a believer in a creator. And this video pertains to everyone that believes in that. And so when I, re when I make these videos, a lot of times I'll start talking like I am now, kind of a, a beginning. And then I'll read this book that I'm going to read from again today. Uh, that's a devotional book. It's written by uh, Sarah Young called uh, Jesus Calling. And it's a devotional to give us confidence each day uh, to read. Now, whether I make the video or not, I read it every day. I pray every day, as many of you do, and ask for prayer. And I, I also, of course, read the Bible because that's God's Word. And I'm 65 years old. I am um, not, not a perfect person. And uh, we're all sinners. And I... I sin every day like you do. I mean, you can't help it. You're just a human being. But I've improved my life. I know a lot of things that I used to do I don't do anymore. Uh, like the Bible says, when you were a child, you did childish things. So put childish things away and become closer to God and to know God. And what happens for people that do learn and study and meditate on the Creator on God, is they grow in confidence. Their lives become more fulfilled. They have better health. They're happier. They understand things better. They have direction, guidance, and they can get through almost any circumstance. And it's only because they finally woke up and come to the realization that you were created by a God and by the God, and you are his child, and he cares about you. And he, in my belief, the Protestant Christian belief, Catholic belief, is, uh, in most any Christian belief, is that he came to this earth and was born of a virgin and went on a cross and died for us so that we can be uh, reconciled to the Father in heaven. Otherwise, we really can't even look upon his face because we're nothing but dirty rags, the Bible teaches. No matter how good you are, a man or a woman or a child, you are born a sinner. And even if you live a much better life, you never murder anyone and do different things, you are no better off entering into heaven until you have confessed Christ as your Savior, until you've invited God into your life or until you believe in God. Now, what I just said was my belief in Christianity is that you have to believe in Jesus Christ, that he was the son of God and that <clears throat> he died on a cross and he was resurrected after three days and went back to heaven to be at the right hand of the father. And he left what they call the Holy Spirit, a person, him, that dwells within our hearts. Now, that is my religious belief. That's what I grew up to believe. If you believe in God, but you don't think that Jesus was God, and uh, you believe that he was a man, and a wise man, a very uh, uh, smart man that left a lot of impressions with people, uh, such as what Jewish people believe. They believe in God and Abraham and their, their belief, but they don't accept Jesus as being the Savior of the world and uh, God incarnate. And I've come to the realization that I know so many Jewish people, and they are wonderful people. They are great family people. And those that believe that aren't non believers, you know, you got atheists and non believers in any religion in Hindu, Muslim, Catholic, Protestant, Jewish. You have a lot of people. I don't know, they just choose not to believe or think they don't believe or there's no such thing as a God or a, or a creator. But anyone, Indian, Hindu, Muslim, Jewish, Catholic, Protestant, 
and all the other ones that I'm not even mentioning. I know there's lots of religions. It is in my heart that I believe, even though I have my own, and they have theirs, and they're going to continue to live their life with their, their beliefs, with their um, rituals, whether it be wearing and adorning certain things, certain things they eschew from their diet, um, certain things they do on certain days of the week, whatever it is, it is my opinion that anyone that chooses to be a moral good person, that believes in being good to others and to themselves and to their children and obedient to laws and just act, just act right, <laughs> you know, obey the, the, the laws of the land, drive correctly, respect other people when you talk to them and meet them. And those people are the ones that I'm talking to. So even though my video is about um, the Old and New Testament and of a, a, a Protestant um, and Catholic uh, teaching, if Jewish uh, teachings are different or Hindu, Muslim, and all those others we mentioned, but you follow something, look, I don't know another person's heart. That's what my Bible teaches. No man knows another person's heart. My Bible teaches, it seems like emphatically, that this is the only way. But I just, I just know too many good people that believe in something else. But they believe. They're not, what I'm trying to say is they're not non-believers. They're good people. And you say, all right, what's that got to all to do with, to do with today's teaching? It's just that I wanted to put that out there that even though I'm teaching from this, don't think that if you believe in something else that I don't, that I, th I think God loves you and you are, you are good to go. Because there's so many people out there that need God and aren't good to go, that are going down the wrong path. They stay on the wrong path. They talk about things. They do things. They are unsaved people. And I think that God is going to, those are going to be the ones that will be standing in this line that say, hey, save me. And he's going to say, away from me, I never knew you. Because he sees the heart. He doesn't see whether, oh, you were a, a Southern Baptist, oh, you were Jewish, or you were Catholic. or you, But when he sees people that were evil to his people and to the world and just caused trouble, and they've had many opportunities and there's hope for them now. But if they stay that way, those will be the ones that will not enter into heaven or into the next life that we are so promised to have. And so that's all I wanted to say about different religions. Now, today's message is about peace and the peace that God gives us. Now, what's the opposite of peace? Restlessness, right? worry, anxiety. Who doesn't do that? Who isn't worried about their property from the hurricanes? Now, I know that this video is being watched by people all across the United States, maybe the world, and they didn't endure a hurricane. So they're not spinning, uh, you know, and worrying about that. You've got your own worries. You're worried about what the doctor said. You're worried about your finances. You're worried about a child you have. You're worried about your relationship your job. The list is long. We don't have to try to hit a hot button. If you're worrying, you don't have peace. And God is peace. And like I said earlier in this video, if you know God and you can get to the mature state of your life at whatever age you are, and you can wake up and you can realize there's a shortcut to happiness and it's knowing God and it's it's knowing that he's true. It's knowing that he will defend you, help you, stand by you, be with you every second of every day of your life. And if you know this, you have a lot less time you give to worrying of which never does any good. And most of those things never even come to pass. And they're very, they're very bad. Um, first, it's a sin because God says, hey, I, I died on a cross. I came to the world and died for you. 
and you are just ignoring that and you're still ignoring what my promises were. I mean, that's like if you're, your child um, doubts that you're going to feed them and take care of them each day. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's rebellion. It's sinful. And so I know it's hard, you know, it's easier said than done. You're worrying about this and that. And people are telling you, hey, don't worry. You know, God's with you. God will take care of it. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You have to say, oh, yeah. That's right. I'm, I'm, I need to quit thinking that. Shake your head. Shake yourself. Shake that off. A man is how he thinketh in his heart. If you go around every day and you wake up each day thinking about negativity, worry, other people, the election, this politician, that politician, and you just give all of your attention to all of these distractions of which the world loves it. The world is throwing it at you. The world is an evil spiritual realm that we live in. That's true. I believe this. Maybe you believe it. That every which way you go, what you watch and what you read and some of the people you come in contact with want to drag you down. They want to keep you in that realm of worry that you have and never let go. It's relentless. It's never ending. They, it will never end. They're, they're evil. It's just, it's an infinite power that they have that never exhaust. They just, it's just evil. It's a force that's out there. But the Bible promises those that are smart enough. It's like teaching people how the magician pulled the rabbit out of the hat. Once I show you how they do that or the card trick, no one, and I repeat, no one could ever fool you again with that particular trick. Even if they come up with new ones, now you know it is a trick. It is not true. You always know, and even if you already knew about m magic, uh, but some people believe in wrestling. Some people believe in the media. Some people believe everything they hear. It's amazing to me of the... Um, What's the word, the kind word, that people are gullible? These beautiful, innocent souls are influenced by evil and lies and just misinformation, a total disingenuine um, articles and things you see, totally disingenuous, these people you watch on TV and on social media. And they sit there and they believe it because they're just vulnerable, gullible, uh, innocent people that, that trust in what, you know, other people tell them. But once you know what the Bible teaches, let's hold up the actual Bible here. If you want to know the, the rule book of life and how you are to live, and quit worrying about things and believing in certain people. If you want the truth, here it is. It's always been here. Most popular book in the entire world that's ever been printed. And yet, people don't want to open it and read because they would rather go the easy road. And I don't know, they love drama. They love lies. They love, they're caught up in it. Your mind has been brainwashed. And you have to shake it off. I woke up uh, years ago, and I backslid a little bit, and, you know, I struggled. Uh, that's what we all do. And then I woke up some more, and I, now I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed, folks. You know, while I have minor setbacks for a few minutes, I catch myself. It's just like going to the gym. You get bigger muscles. If you read your Bible, if you read your devotional, if you meditate on God and you pray and you listen to what his promises say and you believe that he can't lie and that the TV can lie, then you now know how the rabbit is pulled from the hat. You now know it is a gimmick. It is a trick. It is a lie. 
It is not real. This is real. And your realities that God can provide for you. Now, let's give one more example. And I'll try not to make this too long. Uh, here's an analogy. I got a camper I live in here. I bought it one year ago this month. This camper has provided not just shelter. I traveled in it. I made YouTube videos. I, I, I had a safe place to go when hurricanes came. I live in the state of Florida. It provided shelter for friends. It's, it's done a lot of things. God saw all of that. When I bought this, he wasn't like, hey, you know, take a look at these campers and you know, get it and uh, have some camping fun. And that was the end of it. No, he knows my life. And he knows because some time back now, I have relied on him and spoke with him each and every day to help me in my life. And so because as a loving father that he is, and he knows how many hairs you got on your head in the beginning to the end. And he's already got your life. He doesn't tell you what it's going to be, but he, he wants the best for you. Now, this is the best for me. And there's 8 billion people on the planet. And he can make a perfect plan for 8 billion people. And while some of the plans are synonymous in our successes and challenges, we're all individually unique. He is God. And he can provide the best for you. And the more you try to force your way through this world and direct your education and direct your career and direct where you live and direct who you're going to be with and direct who you're going to work for, you have to realize that a lot of the, all of those things, while you thought about it and pursued it, he gave you those ideas. He opened those doors for you. He gave you that that man, that woman, those children, that house, that car, that job, where you live. But what else does he have? He is unlimited in his blessings. And most people never see, while they are blessed and loved, because he loves us, a lot of stuff that he would have done had we been more obedient and practiced trusting and meditating on him instead of forcing a square peg in a round hole and doing what we're hell bent on doing. So you say, well, what does that mean? You just, you know, sit back in a chair and wait for the phone to ring and, you know, this is what you're going to do in your life or your car's self driving, it's going to take you. No, come on now. Let's not get extreme here. But you do get nudging. You do get ideas and people will come in your life you will cross paths with people that you will open doors and help them and they will be opening doors and sharing information with you god does that he brings us together uh and that's how he works through his children you know we're his soldiers we're his servants we're apostles we are to go out in the world and share his word he teaches us. So, what is my main point? Well, I read this morning's devotion. It's Sunday. I live in Florida. There was a big hurricane, like three of them, <laughs> in the last month and a half. And I want to make this video that covers everyone. If you live in Kentucky, Arizona, and you didn't have a hurricane, so I said early in the video, what is the opposite of peace? And it's worrying, it's anxiety. And we talked about all the things that you can worry about and how can you um, stop it? Well, let me just read what the devotional says here and we'll, we'll maybe elaborate a little bit more. Today is the 13th of October, 2024. And Sarah Young writes this devotional here that was uh, put together by these scriptures that are in the Bible right here. And this is what it says to motivate us and to give us assurance about peace, which is the opposite of worry and anxiety. Take time to be still in my presence. 
the more hassle you feel, the more you need to the more you need this sacred space of communion with me. Breathe slowly and deeply. Relax in my holy presence while my face shines upon you. This is how you receive my peace, which I always proffer or proffer to you. I looked up proffer because I didn't know what it meant. It simply means reach out and hand out to you. This is what he always proffers to us. This peace, his shining face on us. He says, how do we get it? To take a deep breath. Isn't it simple? You know, I can teach you how a magician pulls a rabbit out of the hat by going into a lot of detail of what he has to do. God makes it so simple to show his, his, um, his secrets to peace and happiness by telling you just to breathe slowly and deeply and relax in his holy presence while his face shines upon you. So if you were to just to sit here and close your eyes and breathe deeply and slowly and meditate on his face shining on you like a sun just visualize that and let him get into your head and into your mind and you block off those thoughts of worry and and anxiety about all of those things that you're you're worried about and then in just a few minutes maybe 30 minutes, maybe two minutes. You do it as long as you can sit there. And as many times a day as you need to, when you start feeling this worry and this anxiety and you don't have peace, whatever's happening, some new news you hear, something happens out there driving in the store, the storms, uh, something the doctor tells you. Before you just start going amok and calling everybody and getting everybody all uptight, and telling them and all that, and exasperating it. Stop. Sit down. Breathe slowly. Breathe in. Close your eyes. And meditate on God's face shining on you, smiling at you, and His radiant power coming into your mind and your heart, giving you what you would do if you had your three-year-old child come running to you so sad and crying they couldn't even get their breath and you would stroke them and calm them and put a cold compress on their hood on their head and you would tell them you love them and you would tell them don't worry don't worry I got you I love you it's the same thing it doesn't matter how old you are you need that and you can't get that all the time from family and friends. You need that from God. And you can get it anytime you want. If somebody's not around, even if you have the best support system in the world, they don't always know and how to do it the way God can. And I think that was a great analogy. And we've all been like that. We can remember ourselves going to our mommy or our daddy or your mom or your dad, however you say it very worried, very upset, something happened. You hurt your finger, you fell on your bike, you scraped your knee, you're crying, you're weeping. You, who do you go to? Mommy, daddy, who's there, whoever's there? And you look for that, um, what does he say here? That communion, that, that consolence, that it's okay, it's okay. And then you calm down. You start getting calmed down. You just suck it up like a, like a sponge, right? You remember when you were a child? Why not do that now? Why not take whatever's got you going, whatever your panties are in a wad about, whatever you're fretting about, whatever you're crying about, take it right now to God and sit and breathe and close your eyes. Go somewhere in your, in your private area. Pull over in your car. Just do it. It works. It works just like when you're driving and you're so tired and you can't keep your eyes open and you try to drink coffee, slap yourself in the face, you roll down the window. Nothing works. All those are tricks until you pull over. And this works, by the way, if you don't know about it. And close your eyes, even if you don't sleep. But you close those eyes that you've been wanting to do while you're driving 
for the last 20 miles. And you just lay there and put your seat back a little bit and let the engine idle, lock your doors, and you rest for 10, 20, 30 minutes. You are good to go for four hours. Your battery will be so charged, you will be awake. And the same thing goes when you stop when you start getting so tired of worrying and anxious about everything and you just pull over, go in your room, turn that TV off, turn over whatever that you just heard off, block it out. Remember the trick. Say to yourself, that's a trick. That's evil trying to get me down because they know I'm trying to live a positive life. And then you just sit there and you breathe in and out. You close your eyes and you see your holy God, whatever you imagine God to be, like a sun, a radiant sun with a big smile of love, like your mommy or your daddy when you're a little child, consoling you and comforting you and telling you it's okay and I'm going to protect you and I got you. And believe it in your heart and you will be good to go for four hours because it really is something you have to do multiple times a week, a day, an hour if you have to. It depends on how much you're giving in to worry and stress and you don't have this peace. But it's just like going to the gym. The more you work out, the bigger your muscles get, the stronger you get, the better you grow. So the more you start doing this with God in your life, not just when you hear a message or you go to church on Sunday or when it happens to come across your way, but when you work out, when you bring God in more to your life, that's the only way it's going to grow. If you just let it only come in whenever it does, and you're flying by the seat of your pants, you're going to have a whole lot more with no peace than with peace. You can attain peace. You can attain. You can get it. It's free if you only know the secret. And it's not a big deal. He says, just breathe in and out and look and meditate on him. All right, so I'm repeating myself, but I wanted to because I want you to get it. So we read the devotional. Now let's read the scriptures and in the video of what the Bible says that came up with that. And the first one is from Psalms, which I always tell you to read Psalms. If you want peace and happiness, open your Bible and start reading Psalms. They're very comforting. So the first one is Psalm 46, verse 10. And it says, be still and know that I am God. We just said that. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The next one is from the Old Testament. I don't think I've read from Numbers before. This is in the uh, book of Numbers. And it is uh, chapter 6, verses 25 and 26. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So you see Sarah Young, when she wrote this devotion, she didn't deviate much from what the scriptures say. And then John, uh, in the New Testament, 14, the Gospel of John, uh, verse 27 reads, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I mean, that's just, that's just so profound and so, why don't we remember these? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, God is telling you, you're, you're like, oh, I'm afraid, I'm worried. God's telling you, don't. What are you going to tell God? No, I'm sorry. I got to worry. I got to fret about this. I got to have concern. I don't want to have peace. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. And when he said, did I read the second paragraph of that devotional? Imagine the pain. I, I don't think I did. Look, look. I think I got to the end where it says, my peace, which I always um, proffer to you. That's where I ended, where he reaches out to us. I looked up the definition. Oh, my goodness. Please, folks, I'm sorry. 
listen to this. This is going to make sense now. I'm kind of glad it's coming in at the end. Imagine the pain I feel when my children tie themselves up in anxious knots, ignoring my gift of peace. I died a criminal's death to secure this blessing for you. Receive it gratefully. Hide it in your heart. My peace is an inner treasure growing within you as you trust in me. Therefore, circumstances cannot touch it. Be still, enjoying peace in my presence. Wow, I'm so glad I, re I remembered. I think God told me to read that at the end. So, folks, it's just simple. I, I, I want everybody to enjoy, and I don't have it every minute. We can do it right now after this video. You can try it. Even if you're, you're not that sleepy right now, the analogy I gave. Let's go ahead and fill up our battery. Let's recharge. Let's go ahead and close our eyes and breathe deeply and meditate upon the Lord. Look at his face. Visualize him smiling upon you, giving you peace. Peace, not, not answering your prayer, which is all part of it. Not giving you what you're wanting, that house, that car to move, or this health issue you've got to taken away from you. God has a plan for your life. Just ask and meditate on that peace. Because if you're at peace, it really doesn't matter what the other things are. They'll work themselves out. He's got a plan for your life. But you don't need to, until they're resolved, worry about them. You need the peace. So let's go ahead and end the video now. Let's all do it. I'm going to do it. I'm excited about doing it. And then I'm ready to get out here today, the rest of the day, and crush it.